the next topic. What's that? What's that? All right. I would love to tell you that this is a special light bulb that is, you know, a new... I actually stole it from the hotel. I hope the hotel is not watching the streaming in any way. But I didn't know how to introduce you the topic, which is unbelievable. How can you reinvent something that we all have in our houses? And it's bulbs. And we're talking about that with Phil Bosso, which is the founder and CEO of LifeX. So please, Phil, welcome on stage. Thank Hello, you. Phil. Thank you. Take a seat. Right, so we, we have 10 minutes. And after I, I so, show oh, your C party. I'm going to get comfortable. I, I, yeah. <laughs> After I saw Yossi Vardy, I was tempted to say, okay, 9.59, 9.59. That <laughs> <laughs> I was sorry. Okay, Phil, uh, big success. LifeX is a big success. Can you say there is a great video? If you haven't seen it, just have a look. It's great uh, of LifeX that Thank explains you, 20 seconds what is LifeX all about. So LifeX is a RGB light bulb that's controlled with your smartphone. All right. That was the shortest ever. Thank you. Yeah, that's ever, my elevator huh? pitch right there. That, that was the that. pitch for me. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> LifeX got a, a big success mm. when uh, uh, you did this uh, Kickstarter uh, campaign to try to, to raise some, uh, some money. How did the idea start in the beginning? With the beer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> with the as, beer. As all good ideas do. Yeah, I was having a beer with a friend of mine. He's actually a pilot, and he was wondering how he could... Um, he was renovating his house and wanted to know how he could put a switch all right. in his wall that um, he didn't have to cut into the bricks and all that and said, is there any way to do that wirelessly? And I said, oh, look, I'm not actually sure, but uh, you must be able to do with that with your smartphone. And that's right. really where it started. And Kickstarter, how much money did you raise in the end? Um, we wa raised $1.3 million in six days. All right. Who in the audience raised uh, more than $1 million on Kickstarter? Wow, we have one, two, three, <laughs> wow, a lot of people, great. It's hard who work, are you? well done. <laughs> Shout, who are you? All right, cool guys, let's talk about it later. <laughs> because I was interested about it, how can you raise su such a, a big amount of money, you know? So what, what the kind of tips that you can give to, to us about the Kickstarter campaign? Uh, look, it's a bit cliche, but you've just got to have a passion for the product. I think All right. your genuine feeling for the product will come through in the Kickstarter video you do. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, any tactics, marketing or PR that you did? We didn't do any. I think what we did was channel all our marketing energy that we may have spent in marketing just into the product. And I just think if you get the product right, the marketing will look after itself. All right. Uh, why do you think there is a need to reinvent this kind of of object. I mean, that is not enough by itself. Or? Uh, I think that's one of the most unsexy things I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. So, sorry, so there, yeah. it was in the hotel. I just went there and I tried to get one. It was not. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, what, what do you think? Why there is a need in this moment to reinvent this object? Uh, look, the, the light bulb hasn't really changed much in 100 years. You know, you, you turn it on, it goes on, you turn it off, and it goes off. Like, it's pretty boring. And in today's connected society, um, I think there's just a lot smarter things you can do with the light bulb. All right. Well, what kind of smarter things you, you could imagine? Well, um, like we talked about earlier, you can change colours, um, which is one, you know, like, I mean, you look around, like, you know, we've got coloured lights everywhere on the stage. And out, out in the front of the foyer, as, we, as I walked into the web, I noticed there's right. orange lights in the foyer. Why isn't there just white lights? Because white lights are boring. Okay. They're sort of done. That, that's in the past. And now we think that if you've got colour in your house, you're going to have a much better environment you know, to, for your lifestyle and just to go about your daily life. All right. So one thing is changing colours automatically. Sort of chroma therapy, I don't know yeah, how yeah, you call absolutely, it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I saw you could do even much more things, syncing the, the lights with music, this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we can um, tap into your phone's um, music feed, um, and then we can sync the lights. So you get like a, an iTunes visualizer type experience, but with your light bulbs in your lounge room. So it's, it's quite a, an amazing thing. You can have like fast lights if there's a fast song and slow changing sort of more moody lights if you're listening to a bit of jazz or something. All right. I saw also in the video that uh, you can actually give alerts through lights. So you, you can set up uh, your lights with LifeX, and you can say, okay, when, I don't know, someone ring the door, just uh, blink, blink <laughs> a couple of times. Is it possible? Is, is something that you see that could be helpful? 
Yeah, yeah, with the app that we're making, which will be on Android and iOS, um, you'll be able to set up um, like triggers. So if someone rings your doorbell, your lights can blink. Um, if someone, you get a Twitter notification, your lights can blink blue, um, you know, all sorts of things. Basically, we're connecting these light bulbs through an open API to the web. Um, and people are going to be able to do amazing things. I mean, we've thought of quite a few, but we, we think there's a lot of clever people out there that will probably think of even better things than we have. Right. L let's focus a little bit more on uh, the funding part, which is always interesting. So you said uh, over a million funding on, only on Kickstarter. And then uh, uh, any other VCs, angels involved in this moment? Yeah, we did the VC route um, in the Valley. Um, but what we ended up deciding to do was go with um, some local Australian investors. And we just got a really good rapport with um, these people. And so they're angel funding basically our company. Um, right. and yeah. why, why Australia? This is not you know, a usual path for startups. I mean, why? Yeah, well, as you can probably tell from my accent. Yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. um, so that's, that's the main reason. So our investors are close to us because yeah. they offer a lot more than just money. You know, right. a, a good investors will offer. You know, you'd almost have them on your team even if they weren't contributing money, and that's certainly what we All found right. with our no, investors. What, what I mean, obviously, you uh, yeah. Australian, but the, the question is, so the Australian ecosystem is growing, sort of? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like right. Sydney's got a, quite a, a big startup scene, and Melbourne's probably growing even at a faster pace. So, yeah, it won't be, won't be long, I think, before Melbourne will be kicking their butts. All right, mm -hmm. great. And uh, what's the situation of the company now? When the product will be launched, if it's possible to, to say? Because in the beginning, we heard a lot of, about Kickstarters. I, I think Loic said, uh, I've been investing in some Kickstarter project, but then they, they didn't come out yet. They delayed the uh, delivery. So what's the situation for LifeX? Uh, look, we're expecting March delivery. Um, we're actually slightly ahead of schedule. We're spending a lot of time at the moment finding the right manufacturing partners. And we think we've found the right one, so we're just sort of closing that deal at the moment. Um, right. But that will expedite our manufacturing process. So we're sort of taking our time at the moment. But then we, we, once we've decided on that partner, we'll probably have a three-month lead time. All right. And then LifeX will come out and be available. And, and the price, rain, price ranging, you have an idea of what will be the price? Yeah, look, at probably around $79, which sounds like a lot for a light bulb. But we're, what we're doing is we're probably creating, like, converting the light bulb into a consumer electronics device. So we think $79 for all that value is probably you know, on the money. The, the right part. Uh, one, one, we just have a couple of, of minutes, but just to, to get an idea of the LifeX. And uh, how will you handle the competitors? I mean, I think about Philips, the big companies that maybe are in this business, the traditional business for a long time. So how, how do you think? Uh, is it possible to really disrupt this industry? Uh, look. We're creating a new category, and then that, that doesn't happen very often, and certainly not with the light bulb. The last time a new category was created with the light bulb was probably 100 years ago with Thomas Edison. So this is, this is a very open market. Um, we, we think there's plenty of room for lots of players, and we're certainly going to be one of the big players in that market. All right. Well, what's um, about innovation? You know, because in the end, we're talking about reinventing something, which is always very interesting. Um, how can you, what kind of tips can you give uh, about uh, the right way to innovate in this Internet of Things world uh, that, you know, we're talking about Internet of Things, we don't know exactly where is it, but <laughs> somewhere will be. So what, what's your point of view about that? Look, I think innovation comes from some, you know, dark abyss. I don't think anyone <laughs> really knows where it comes from. Um, you know, I, I think you've got to have a thousand ideas floating around up here before one is worth talking about. And then for everyone you talk about, you know, one in a hundred is probably going to be a good idea. So I think if your brain just naturally just is churning over all the time, thinking and thinking about new ideas, that's probably a great start. All yeah. right. Uh, all right, Phil. So the, I, I think that the Internet of Things, we, we were talking also before, I, I was curious about that and then I let you go. Uh, but um, it's very interesting that uh, we're focusing about Internet of Things, but are we sure that consumers really care about that, or, or maybe not? I don't know this. Yeah, look, uh, I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think consumers just care about having a sexy, smart device in their home. Um, I'm sure everyone here cares about it, and we should. You know, we're the creators and the innovators. Right. But yeah, I, I think the consumers just, you know, if it can't just pick it up, look at it, go, oh, I know what that means, put it in your house, and away you go. 
then it's probably not the right product and it's probably a bit of a self-absorbed kind of artist approach, whereas I think you need to create your art and your innovation for the end user. All right. So in the end, you, you care about the consequences of technology and not about the technology uh, itself. Yep. All right, Phil. So I think uh, to, to recap, uh, Life Facts coming soon. Tell me again. Tell us again the, the date. Yes, March 2013. Right. March 2013. Yep. Price, all right, will be set, but uh, 70 bucks, yeah, around something like that. Seventy nine dollars. Yeah. And and to install, just buy the bulbs and put it in your yep. house. Or That's something it. Like Download that. an app, and away you go. You'll have the best, sexiest lights you've ever had in your house. All right. <laughs> Great. All right, we we are running out of time. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. Phil Bosch of LifeX. We'll check it out in 2013. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Marco. Thank you so much.